capturing high quality sound in our videos means getting into good habits and establishing routines for setting up and using our audio gear. In reality, this is just as important as the routines we have for checking things like framing, exposure and focus before we start shooting. Because no matter how good the visual elements of our videos are, poor sound will always let them down. In this video, I'm going to go through the routines that I think are important to capturing good audio, making sure our finished movies sound as good as they look. Although I'll be talking in the context of a solo shooter filming interviews, many of the same principles apply to all kinds of movie making and all kinds of situations. From the word go, it's important to understand that a built-in camera mic won't deliver good sound and that a separate mic used off camera will improve your sound recording dramatically. This is mainly because A, built-in camera mics are often pretty grim and B, as a rule of thumb, when you're doing voice recordings, the mic needs to be as close to the talent as possible to get a good intelligible sound. In this video, I'll be discussing the two types of microphone most commonly used by grassroots videographers. Firstly, shotgun mics, such as the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, or the Deity S Mic 2, and also Lavalier or Lav mics, for example, the Sennheiser ME2, which can be used either wired or wirelessly. If you're shooting in a noisy environment, a lav mic is probably the best choice, as you can get it in really close to a sound source, helping your talent's voice dominate over external noise. On the other hand, if conditions allow, a shotgun mic will give you a more transparent, natural sound. When you're shooting outdoors or in a busy indoor space like a trade show, using wireless equipment such as the Sennheiser G4 system is the way to go, as cables become difficult for a solo shooter to manage in a more dynamic situation. Wireless lav mics are a common sight, but shotgun mics can also be used with an XLR transmitter, though this usually requires a battery powered mic. Good sound recording starts with understanding the recording environment. And step one to this is to listen to the sound of that environment carefully. This might sound a little zen, but it's amazing just how much ambient sound our ears, or rather our brains, block out when we're not paying attention. If you're indoors, listen for things like noisy aircon units, computer fans or buzzing lights, and turn them off. Check for open windows or doors letting in unwanted noise and close them. Clap your hands and listen to the room acoustics. If there's a lot of room reverb, you could try calming this with some acoustic blankets, like the producer's choice products from Vocal Booth to go. Failing that, some heavier domestic quilts and rugs will help. Alternatively, if you can't reduce reverb problems at source, you may opt to use a lav mic to reduce the amount of room reverb you're picking up in relation to your talent's voice. If you're outdoors, you've probably got little or no control over environmental noise. But again, understanding what you're up against might help you decide on mics and mic placement. And finally, make sure everyone involved has turned off their mobile phone or put it into flight mode. When you're shooting indoors, you have more of a choice whether to use a shotgun or lav mic because you're likely to have greater control over your filming environment and potentially more setup time than if you're working outdoors. If you can, run a cable to your mic rather than going wireless, as this should give better audio quality, as well as being more reliable. If you're working with a shotgun mic, bring this in overhead, just in front of your talent and angled towards their chest. This placement gives a good, rich sound and also allows for some movement by your talent. Position a mic just out of frame and check that it isn't casting any unwanted shadows on your talent or on the background. On a health and safety note, be sure your mic stand is up to the job, as even a small weight on the end of a boom exerts a lot of torque, and a fall in mic stand can be both embarrassing and dangerous. If possible, use a C-stand with a boom pole attachment, or a purpose-built overhead mic stand with a counterweight. Leg weights are also a good idea. If you're working with a lav mic, clip it to your talent's clothing around 8 to 10 inches or 20 to 25 centimeters directly below their chin. It's always a good idea to hide lav mic cables under your talent's clothing and to make sure that both cables and wireless transmitter are secure as any movement of these can transfer to the mic 
and be audible in your recording. A loop in a lav mic's cable near the mic itself acts as a shock absorber if the cable gets tugged for any reason. If you have time, you could tape the lav cable in place. If you're working outdoors and don't have a wireless lav, or if you're interviewing multiple talents where repeatedly rigging and retrieving a wireless lav could become a problem, you may have to resort to using a camera mounted shotgun mic. If this is the case, try to get in as close to your talent as possible, shooting with a wider angle to achieve your frame rather than stepping back and increasing the distance between your mic and your talent. A better solution in this situation is to use a handheld shotgun mic with an XLR transmitter like the Sennheiser SKP500, but check that either your mic can be battery powered or that your XLR transmitter delivers phantom power. If you're using a shotgun mic, either on camera or handheld, it's crucial to use an appropriate shock mount, as otherwise handling noise from a camera or from a mic itself will be picked up. In addition, regardless of what kind of mic you're using, when recording outdoors, it's always a good idea to use a windscreen or dead cat, as even a slight breeze hitting your mic can sound like an express train running through your set. There are three main methods that filmmakers use to record audio. Recording directly to camera, recording to camera via an external preamp, or recording to an external field recorder. If you're using a DSLR or mirrorless camera, recording direct to camera isn't the best choice, as these have a reputation for low quality, noisy preamps, and many of them only record audio at 16 bits, which reduces the dynamic range available to you from a word go. Using an external mic preamp allows you to reduce the gain on your camera's audio input and gives you a cleaner audio signal going to camera. Alternatively, you can use an external recorder for your audio, taking advantage of both better mic preamps and 24-bit recording, though your audio track will require synchronising to your video in post-production. If you use an external recorder, make sure you also record audio directly onto your camera, either by connecting the two devices with a mini jack cable or by recording with your camera's inbuilt mic. Doing this means you have both a high quality external recording and a reference audio track that you can sync to in post. A single loud hand clap at the start of each take will make syncing audio fairly easy, allowing you to align the audio spike from your external recorder's audio track with that from your camera's onboard mic in post. Professional grade camcorders and cinema cameras tend to have good quality mic preamps and are more likely to record at 24 bits, largely negating the need to use either an external mic preamp or an external recorder. Once everything's rigged, be sure to do a sound check with your talent before recording in order to establish good input levels. Get them to read a short poem or ask them to tell you about their journey to the shoot. This gives you a much better idea of how they're going to talk during filming than simply getting them to recite the customary testing 1212. Your main recording level should be set to average around minus 12 dB on your audio meters, and you should avoid letting your meters hit 0 dB or going red, as this means the signal is clipping, which will be audible in playback. If your equipment allows, Record a safety track around 10 to 12 dB below your main audio track, so that if you do get an unexpected peak in volume, you can cut to this in post. If your recording device has a limiter of some kind, by all means use this to contain the hottest signal peaks, but don't rely on it to compensate for pushing your average recording levels too high, as this gives an unnatural sound that will be very apparent on playback. And just in case you're wondering, always avoid using automatic level controls for your audio. One last thing to do before starting your interview is to record maybe 30 seconds of the ambient sound. This gives you a chunk of background noise that matches the background of your main audio track. You can use this for sound bridges over gaps in your main audio track caused by things like fade to black transitions or B-roll sequences. Background sound will generally sound far better the blocks of absolute silence. Once you start recording, it's important to monitor your audio throughout, preferably over decent closed back headphones, rather than by simply watching the audio meters. Headphones allow your eyes to focus on the action rather than your sound level meters, 
while your ears can concentrate on the soundtrack as it's going to camera. There's also something about wearing headphones that sharpens our listening senses, enabling us to hear things like slam doors or passing police sirens in the background that otherwise we might simply block out. When you've finished, if time allows, let your talent take a break while you check through your clips for any issues with the audio, just to be on the safe side. Hopefully everything's fine and you have a good quality soundtrack for your video interview. However, if there is a problem, it's much better to do retakes now while you're set up and while you have the talent at your disposal rather than needing to schedule a reshoot. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, don't. It's a free country. See you next time.